In this video, we will show you how to replace your inner tie rod end. Let's get started. Okay friends, let's get started on our job. The first thing you need to do is safely raise and support the front of the vehicle so the wheel's off the ground. Once you've done that, continue on to removing your center cover and then all five of your lug nuts. We'll use a 21 millimeter socket to remove these. With the wheel out of the way, we have a nice clear view of our outer and inner tie rod ends. Right in the center, you're going to find a 21 millimeter jam nut. We'll use our wrench to break this free by turning it clockwise. <clears throat> Once you have that broken free, continue on to your outer tie rod end nut. To remove this nut, we'll use an 18 millimeter socket. After you've removed the nut, continue on to removing the outer tie rod end from the knuckle. Sometimes you're going to have to give the knuckle a couple bonks to break it free. Now we can start unscrewing the outer tie rod end from the inner tie rod end. As we turn this counterclockwise, count the amount of turns it takes to remove it. Now we can start removing the jam nut from the inner tie rod end. To do that, we'll hold the inner tie rod end with some locking pliers and use our 21 millimeter socket to remove the jam nut. At this point, we can continue on to removing the bellows boot from the inner tie rod end and power steering rack. Use some long nose pliers and remove the outboard clamp. Let's continue on following that bellows boot to where it connects onto the power steering rack. On this, you're going to find a single time use clamp. Right along this area on our application, there's a little ridge that I can grab onto with a pry bar, give it a couple bonks to break it free. Continue on to grabbing onto that bellows boot. Give it a little twist to remove it from the power steering rack and the inner tie rod end. Sometimes you have to use a pick to try to break it free. After you have it off of the power steering rack, go ahead and give it a tug and remove it from the inner tie rod end shaft as well. Give that a quick inspection. Make sure it's still soft and pliable and it's not torn, worn, or damaged in any way. Now we're going to continue on with an inner tie rod end tool. There's several different tools you can use to remove an inner tie rod end from a steering rack. This is the tool that we will be using. We're going to come right along this area of the joint of the inner tie rod end. Turn this counterclockwise, being extremely careful not to damage the power steering rack along the way. Just set this so we can turn this counterclockwise to remove it. Once you have the inner tie rod end broken free, continue on by removing the tool and then completely remove the inner tie rod end from the power steering rack. Okay friends, let's get ready to install our brand new inner tie rod end. You'll notice with your kit, it came with a little grease packet. Use approximately 75% of this inside the ball joint of the tie rod end itself make its way around here. That's going to help lubricate it and make sure that no moisture makes its way inside seizing it up. Once it's well lubricated, continue on by putting it into the power steering rack. You want to make sure you start this in by hand so you do not cross thread it in any way. Once you have it bottomed out, continue on with your inner tie rod end tool. We need to make sure that this is tight against the rack itself. Reinstall your tie rod end tool and then torque this to 74 foot pounds. Now that we have the inner tie rod end tightened to the power steering rack, continue on with what's left of the grease inside your packet. Looking at the inner tie rod end, you can see that it has this groove. That's where the end of the bellows boot needs to sit and where the clamp will be. Now it's time to install our bellows boot. Slide that in position over the inner tie rod end, bringing it all the way down over the power steering rack. 
continue on to installing a clamp or use a wire tie. Make sure that's nice and tight. Trim the excess. Let's make sure the boot is sitting in the proper area on the inner tie rod end and reinstall that clamp. Continue on with copper never seize on the threads. Install your jam nut approximately halfway down the threaded area. Now it's time to install our outer tie rod end. When you install this, make sure you put it on the same amount of turns as it took to remove it originally. Let's line this up with the steering knuckle and slide it into position. Continue on to your outer tie rod end nut. Now let's bottom this out and then torque it to 59 foot pounds. Continue on by snugging the jam nut and then making sure it's tight. When you try to tighten this, make sure you're holding the outer tie rod end. Once you've double checked everything, go ahead and reinstall your wheel. Put that in position. Start on all five of your 21 millimeter lug nuts, bottom them out. We'll get the wheel safely back on the ground and then torque each of these lug nuts to 100 foot pounds. Once the wheel's safely on the ground, continue torquing these in a crisscross manner. Reinstall your center cover. Okay friends, we've got the car back together. At this point, take yourself safely down to your local alignment shop. Aside from that, thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.